ladies and gentlemen whales are gonna have a brand new way to spend a ton of money on new bundles coming soon to I, I mean um sorry did I say bundle I meant um it's the formation system yeah yeah it's just gonna add strategic depth certainly not a system that's going to come with a bundle surely it will be very fair for free-to-play players right okay I'm gonna set aside the snarkiness for a second okay the new Halloween update is coming to rise of kingdoms on 10 26 though that's in like a week from now not even and with this update is going to come the absolute game changer formation system which we're going to talk about today and of course if I'm recording this before the update is out then that means I don't know what the update is going to be like exactly so I'm going to be giving you guys my first impressions on this system and how I expect it to play out based on well based on playing the game for 1445 days I feel like I know Lilith like an abusive partner at this point I'm pretty good at figuring out what she's gonna do and how she's gonna do it so let me tell you guys what I think about this uh this new update coming soon so first of all the Halloween event series they announced basically a Halloween event which we already expected was going to come it does not look like it's going to be a 7k gem event I could be wrong about that but we have Esmeralda's prayer here which honestly I'm not a huge fan this is basically just another wheel in the game and I I'm not I don't know I just you know if you get lucky with them great but I never get lucky with Es Esmeralda's uh prayer so typically I just don't really like that event and then we have a couple other things here that uh are pretty standard I like Soroli Assault I think this is a great event Race Against Time not a huge fan of that that one uh but overall I mean Halloween events are fun also there's that means there's probably going to be another city skin a Halloween uh city skin that I, I mean I hope they don't just recycle old ones I hope they put a new one in the game because the Halloween city skins are some of the best looking skins in the game I'm pretty sure the first skin in the game was actually the Halloween trick-or-treat skin which I think looks sick even for an older skin but we have soul villa we have creep wood cabin like some of these Halloween ones look so good dude wailing keep oh my god next they talk about a a new season of a conquest story and I've talked about this in previous videos but I don't like to discuss new kvks until we see them in the game because they I mean it's they're so rarely good that I would rather just see it in person like we we can't tell how good this is going to be based off the text alone so we'll wait and see the story here sounds cool I love ancient Egypt things so I love that and this is also you know we just got the Egypt civilization this year so I think this the theme here is great uh and new season of conquest stories are also good for the game the formation system System, though is definitely something that I want to touch upon because I'm very worried about this system okay and there's some good things about the system and there's some bad things about the system and we we have to talk about them okay so first of all um the one thing that I want to say in general that is good about this is that I'm excited for there to be a new way to implement strategy into the game and I'm also excited for there to be a new system for me to work on right because for me I've been playing the game for a long time I've spent a little bit of money uh and I have some equipment sets that I think are pretty decent they're okay right um they're not the best pieces of equipment in the game obviously right but I think I have a you know a decent amount of solid equipment and so every new piece that I get of legendary gear um is sort of a smaller upgrade than it was initially right like my first legendary uh special talented iconic piece was incredible my first legendary accessory the second legendary accessory so exciting so great right but now I've got you know four or five legendary accessories I've got a bunch of legendary equipment some of it has talents and so you know the new the new piece that I get are are more micro optimizations than than massive game changers like they used to be and that's again not to say that I'm done with equipment I'm far from done there's plenty of pieces that I still want and need but the idea of a new system coming to the game that I can work on is exciting to say the least however the implementation of that system is where I'm very uh concerned I should say okay so we have seven new formations come into the game right and you can assign these formations to a commander in combat and each formation will give you unique battle performance bonuses and added strategic depth now keep that in mind they're focusing on the words strategic depth even down here for armaments they say place more strategic options at your fingerprints right so the angle that they're approaching the formation system from is that this is going to give you more ways to strategize in the game and what does that mean that means if you're smart enough and if you understand the game enough you can outplay your opponents 
based on your understanding of the strategy and the formation system in general right that's the implication here you can win by outsmarting your enemies right I mean that's the whole that's what strategy is right a good strategy is a winning strategy a bad strategy is a losing strategy now my assumption of this system is that when you send out an army into the open field or rally or garrison you will be able to set a formation for that army which is great right I'm sure that we're, once this comes out of the game we'll know that there's going to be a rally formation a garrison formation an open field formation maybe a PVE formation right like let's say you're going to kill barbs all day maybe there's a PVE formation we don't really know but there's seven of them uh, and it's pretty straightforward I think it'll be pretty obvious which one you want to use in a given scenario I think that's that's pretty good however the armament and inscription system is where things start to get really sticky really fast to be quite honest with you so there are 28 unique armaments that can be equipped to various formations each type is imbued with a set of randomized attribute buffs upon acquisition with a chance of inscription buff for legendary and epic armaments and even stronger boosts so in that one sentence they've introduced two new random factors to the formation system obtaining an armament will give you a randomized attribute buff it says upon acquisition so when you first obtain the armament the buffs that it will have are randomized right so unlike equipment which has a set amount of stats right if I come in here and I craft the golden age it will always give me 13 percent of larger defense six percent of infantry defense four percent cavalry attack with a chance to crit and if it crits then it will always give me 17 percent archer defense eight percent infantry defense and five and a half percent cavalry attack that's always the case these are not randomly generated numbers and so you know what to expect when you craft that piece however for armaments it sounds like that's going to be different right when you acquire a specific armament it will have randomized attribute buffs so that in itself is the antithesis of strategy because from the very beginning you have no control over the attribute buffs for these armaments now the other thing that is revealed here is that there are different rarities of armaments right so there may be green tier there may be blue tier and then epic and legendary so we already know which are going to be the most powerful here which also implies which ones are going to be the most difficult to obtain so theoretically you could do all the work necessary to obtain a legendary armament only for it to have attribute buffs that are not very great now let me be fair here and say we don't know what the attribute buffs are right if it's one percent cavalry attack versus two percent cavalry attack then okay like that's not that big of a deal right it the little bit of randomness is cool it is what it is and it's exciting if you get lucky okay however if it's five percent cavalry attack versus 15 percent cavalry attack I mean that's that's kind of a big deal right and nothing is gonna feel worse than getting your first legendary armament and having it be like three percent bonus damage to barbarians like the, you know so we don't really know exactly what these attribute buffs are going to be but again the randomized nature is a huge red flag to me as a player I don't like the randomized things especially when it comes to a system that you suggest are strategic but it doesn't end there because when you first acquire an armament there's also the chance that it could get an inscription buff which to me sounds like getting a crit on equipment I don't know what the chances are going to be here I don't know how this is going to work but it's possible that you could get an armament with a really good randomized attribute and it will get an inscription and the inscription could be horrible right it says there are nearly a hundred different types of inscriptions available each of which in live in combat or place more strategic options at your fingerprints but again if this is randomized it can't be strategic they are their opposites of one another and the fact that there's a hundred different inscriptions means that you're probably never going to get the one that you want even if you get the inscription upon first acquisition right also there's no way that they can balance a hundred different inscriptions right like some of them are going to be better than others just like some equipment is better than other equipment and some commanders are better than other commanders some inscriptions are going to be better than other inscriptions so we already know probably which ones are going to be better right if there's an inscription for five percent all damage and another inscription for three percent all damage well I mean obviously we know which one is better and the devs will know which one is better as well so even if you assume that all 100 different inscriptions have an even probability of appearing at any given time then that means you have a one percent chance of getting the inscription that you want and again that's assuming that they all have equal probability of appearing which I think is 
probably not going to be the case again I think it'll be pretty clear which inscriptions will be better than others and I think those are probably going to be the ones that are most difficult to obtain again take this all with a grain of salt this is my first impressions we don't actually know how this is going to work but I've never seen a game balance a hundred different uh stat bonuses it's just impossible even the longest running RPG like look look at World of Warcraft okay they go through balance changes multiple times per expansion and it's changed so much over the years and the more randomness that they add to the equipment the less the players are happy so this occurs in every single game out there and it's universally a, a negative thing to incorporate this much randomness but there's more okay because there are ways that you can sort of control the inscription okay and this i like i like the ability to re-inscribe new inscriptions onto armaments to vary the inscription buffs okay so great news if you do get an armament that does not have the buffs that you want and it's not got it doesn't have an inscription then you can recycle it at courier stations for gold and silver coins which can be used in turn to purchase armament chests and supplies containing inscriptions okay so here we have right off the bat a way to recycle the useless armaments and inscriptions this is good okay this to me sounds like the past glory event in kvk where you have a bunch of sculptures of commanders you've expertise already you could just recycle them get coins and exchange them for things that you actually want so that's good what we don't know is how many gold and silver coins will you get for the recycle and how much does it cost to purchase new or to get a new armament right but the flexibility of the recycling system is going to make or break this system just straight up okay because we've already found out that there's a ton of randomization into the armaments right right out of the gate it's going to be extremely randomized the good news is you can recycle the garbage that you don't want the bad news is we don't know what that conversion rate is going to be do i have to recycle 10 epic armaments to get a legendary armament or do i have to recycle 100 500 we have no idea second thing is that there will be a bundle that will include gold and silver coins i would i'm betting a hundred dollars right now if this system does not have an associated bundle within the first month of it coming out i will donate a hundred dollars to whatever charity you guys want comment down below i don't care this system will come with a bundle uh, and the reason that i know that is because the crystal tech system came with a bundle the museum system came with a bundle the equipment system came with a bundle there's a bundle for everything okay so we already know that this system is not going to be free to play friendly in the fact that it's extremely randomized and it will be something you can pay for like straight up i could be wrong okay the iconic system didn't come with a bundle when it first came out so we'll have to see but the iconic system isn't also randomized like this okay moving on it says governors have the option of reinscribing new inscriptions onto armaments to vary their inscription buffs so again this is you know if you get if you get an armament that has let's say you finally craft an armament that has the attribute buffs that you want let's say it's health or, or defense or whatever you care about most maybe it's all damage maybe it's rally damage I, we don't know what these attribute attribute buffs could be okay let's say you finally get one but but you don't get an inscription on it or you get an inscription that is basically worthless you can re-inscribe that um, armament to actually get something else now what does this mean does this mean we get to choose the inscription that then goes on that armament or does it just re-roll the inscription does it give you another one in a hundred chance of getting the one that you want because if it's another re-roll this system is going to be horrible okay uh, it, it's just it's going to be horrible i'm sorry if you have to continue to re-roll a one in a hundred chance every single time and again that's assuming that they all have an even probability which i highly doubt nothing in this game has an even probability okay like literally look at gold chest equipment chest uh the wheel of fortune everything in this game is random is different probabilities okay but again just for argument's sake let's say it's a one in a hundred chance um if the reinscription system is another re-roll that's gonna suck dick okay um if you get to choose the reinscription well hey that actually might not be that bad now this could be really expensive it could be really cheap uh who knows i would be willing to bet if i if i were a betting man i would say the reinscription system is probably a reroll just based on uh, you know i know lilith i know how they operate it's probably a reroll which sucks um but i hope i'm wrong finally there's the new building okay the state forum 
unlock the state form to enable formations okay cool the state form is also where governors can go to travel and accept dispatch quests simply complete the quest alongside the desired commander to gain more armaments and great rewards this implies that uh the quests are commander specific however the armaments are formation specific so I don't really understand what commanders have to do with the state form it could just be that it operates like a bastion system where there's just it's just there's a commander there and you just that's what they use for this system I don't know um or it may be the case that you know you have a certain number of daily quests that you can do and if you don't have the commander required maybe you can't do that quest or maybe you know the farther along the progression of that commander the faster you complete the quest or the more rewards you get so for example if you have a five 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 one saladin you maybe can complete the quest and get fewer rewards than somebody who has an expertise saladin i have no idea how the system is going to work but it does seem like there will be a quest system that probably will give you some number of these silver and gold coins that you can then exchange for armament chests or inscription supplies or whatever now we also learn here that formations are only going to be available to kingdoms in season two or later on a limited basis pending full release now this is really interesting okay first of all i'm happy that this is not going to be in the game for new players because this is another system that they'll have to learn which will be extremely complex i mean it's just not only is the formation system itself going to be complex with the introduction of perhaps ranged commanders right which we already know is coming on top of learning the new formations they would have to understand inscriptions and armaments and all that stuff so i'm happy that this is not coming to brand new players right i think that's good for the game however i'm i'm unhappy to discover that it's going to go all the way back to season two right because what this means is that you do not have an option of playing rise of kingdoms without this system for like let's say crystal technology was spent in the game you have the option of migrating to a newer kingdom uh and sort of avoiding the season of conquest right and in that way you wouldn't have to worry about uh you know crystal tech or you know a lot of the newer commanders or whatever the case might be um, but in this way they have essentially they are rewriting the way that the game functions from the ground up so if you migrate to a season two kvk great news this is still in the game so you will not have an option of getting around the formation system you must use formations uh moving forward in rise of kingdoms so if this system is good then it's exciting it's a new thing to work on great if it's bad great news you are trapped this is the future of the game uh and unless they change anything later then you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck so that's pretty much it they've added new achievement rewards i'm sure there's gonna be achievements related to getting legendary armaments or inscriptions or whatever um that's gonna be interesting to see but who cares whatever it is what it is i'm leaning towards pessimistic here because of how much randomization is built into this system just from the get-go but again i that could change if you know if there's a 50 percent chance of getting uh, an inscription on your first craft well, well i mean that's not that bad right man i i think that this system is going to be extremely pay to win when it first comes out and then they'll slowly dial it back and dial it back and dial it back as the community complains and as people quit and then once it gets to a nice good place that's probably going to be like a year and a half from now then they'll release a new system that's extremely pay to win that's just how this game works right i've been playing the game for years i know how this thing is um that's why they keep releasing new commanders that's why they've released the equipment system that's why they implemented the iconic system that's why they implemented the crystal tech system uh the game is run by by money right the whales keep the game online but you know with the randomization involved maybe the free-to-play players will get lucky and they'll get a really nice attribute buff with uh, a solid inscription and you know you'll continue to compete with uh with the low to medium spenders the whales will always and forever dominate you without you being able to do anything at the end of the day i am excited for a new thing to work on and hopefully it is strategic like i i hope that is the case um but I, i'm just really this it seems it seems like a new equipment system that's really what it feels like to me uh the formations obviously are, are strategic but the randomness involved with the armaments and inscriptions feels like a new equipment system and that kind of sucks i don't know I, I don't know this just feels slimy right the more you say random the less i'm the less i'm excited okay so we'll have to wait and see i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below what do you think about the formation system are you excited for this are you worried about it do you think it's going to be free to play friendly or do you think it's going to be paid to win i would love to hear from you in the comment section below and also lilith would like to hear from you by clicking this big green feedback button so make sure that you give them feedback tell them what you think about this system do you think that it is flawed from the beginning or do you think it has potential they want to know 
so make sure you click that and tell them with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps me defeat the youtube algorithm and we're so close to 40,000 subscribers so go ahead and consider clicking the subscribe button you can always change your mind later and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace